takes like five minutes to, to, to get that effect, okay? Put a little pressure with it as well. So roll, it up, roll up an ice pack or maybe get a nice ice cube or something like that to lay on so that pressure releases the muscle as well, okay? Um, when I think of the muscle tightness, I think of it like, like a sponge. So if you had a sponge and you squeezed it and you ran it under a faucet, right? It's not going to soak up any water. It's going to stay mostly dry and it's going to stay kind of brittle, right? That's your muscle. All right. When your muscle's tight, your muscle's irritated, it doesn't soak up any blood flow. It stays kind of tight, it gets irritated. Over time, more of the muscle gets irritated, more of the muscle gets tight. So what we have to do is we have to decrease that tightness in there. One of the ways to do that is pressure, gentle pressure. So the self massages I'm going to show you guys in a second, addresses that. And the other thing, kind of what I just talked about, is in that suboccipital region or in the base of your head. So getting some just gentle pressure right there. What you're doing is you're basically opening that sponge up. When you open that sponge up, boom, blood flow rushes back in, washes out the chemical irritants, you feel great. That's when you go and you throw the hot pack on, right? Heat's gonna increase blood flow. It's gonna wash away irritants. Blood is what we need to heal things, so it's gonna bring in all those nutrients. Um, and so that kind of talks a little bit about the massage as well. Um, headache diary. This is, a, this is a really good one, um, especially for people who have not identified their triggers yet or don't know why they're getting the headaches. Let's say they've addressed posture, but they, you know, they're better, they're not getting them quite as bad, but they still really get the headaches you know, maybe as often. Headache diaries are great. So when you feel a headache come on, write down every activity you just did in the last six hours, every food you ate today, whatever you ate yesterday, things like that. This is what's gonna help you to establish a pattern. You know, a lot of triggers are related to food, cheese, milk, gluten, caffeine, alcohol. You know, these are all things that trigger a lot of headaches, trigger a lot of migraines. And a lot of times, as simply as filling out a diary, you'll notice these triggers. Every time I go to that Mexican restaurant, when I go home, my head is killing me. You know, oh, you know, couldn't have been the margarita and the cheese quesadilla I just had. You know, things like that. And so those are gonna be the type of things that a headache diary are gonna help you just start to um, sort of get in contact with. Okay, so this is the little handout I gave you guys. Um, and this is, we're gonna start with the self massages. These are great because you can do them anywhere. You can do them at work, you can do them while you lay in bed, you can do them wherever. They're easy, they're not hard to do. And the idea here is that whole releasing of the muscle. So we talked about the sponge thing. That's what this helps with. It helps release the muscle. Um, it also helps in the sense that it can become kind of rhythmic. So you take your mind off of the headache a little bit. Right? You're thinking about the massage, you're thinking about how it feels, it feels pretty good. So then you kind of take your mind off that headache for a little while. So this first one is called the temporal. And basically all you're doing is you're just putting four fingers right above your ears and you're just doing little circles, right? So you're not doing a lot of pressure. You shouldn't feel your scalp or your, you should feel your scalp, sorry. You shouldn't feel your brain. Right? So you shouldn't be feeling your skull when you press right there. It should just be nice and easy. The tissue or your skin underneath should move. Right? If that's not moving, then you're pressing way too hard. Okay? So it should just be nice and gentle. And you do circles forward, backwards, maybe move back a little bit, forwards, backwards, move forward a little bit, forwards, backwards. You know, you do that for about a minute or so. All right? Then you move on to the next one. So the next one is, is really good for sinuses as well, but this one's called the frontal. Basically, this is the windshield wiper. All right? So you're just putting the fingers right above the eyebrows and you're just wiping. You're just wiping across, okay? So you're, what are we doing here? We're basically, we're wringing out those irritants and we're getting some fresh blood flow in. So we're wringing out the irritants, getting some fresh, fresh blood flow in, okay? And both sides, even if you're only having the headache on one side, so you got the migraine symptoms, right? You're getting just that migraine type of symptom, do both sides, okay? You're gonna get good blood flow to the whole area. And while that is one of the triggers for the migraines is the increase in blood flow, what we don't want to establish is you don't want to get that rebound headache or that secondary headache of a tension headache with the migraine. Okay? A lot of times if you're at the stage where your migraine's full blown, you know, you're probably you've you're on the medication now and you're you're hitting up your regimen. You know, you've got a regimen that usually works for you. Um, and so what this can do is this can help usually decrease sort of the duration, hopefully, that you, you experience these headaches. Next one. So this one's uh, good for tension headaches. And basically all you're doing is you're just taking the thumbs and applying some gentle pressure right into the eyebrows or just above your eyelids, okay? And this one, you're basically gonna just hold. You know, so you're doing that little gentle pressure. No circles, no wiping, just nice little pressure. Next one. This one, if you could only pick one to do, this is the one to do every time, all right? So this one, 
It's called kind of the third eye, right? So basically right where you'd have your little third eye, you take a few fingers and you're just going to apply that pressure right there. You're not moving, you're not doing anything. You're just applying the pressure and you're just holding. And so what you're doing is once again, you're going to decrease the blood flow initially to the area, but then as soon as you take your fingers away, you get a nice rinse of blood flow into the area. Okay? And a lot of times, this is sort of the same thing that's happening when you put ice or if you put a little bit of pressure into the back of your head. Right? You're doing the same thing. You're actually decreasing blood flow to the area, which is kind of the problem to begin with, but then once you take that pressure away, boom, you get the nice flush. It's like a dam breaking, right? That water, that blood flow just flushes right in, washes everything away. Once you can get those irritants out of the way, typically the muscles can relax. The irritants are usually what cause the muscles to get all nice and irritated in the first place. All right, next stretches. So this is the, the first part of what I call my one minute exercise, okay? So these are, these are the, the, the bread and butter for you know, the first day I see a patient, I, we go over these for sure. Besides talking about posture and things like that, this is one of the things that we make sure that we get into. And so the idea here is, you know, your head is pretty important, right? One, arguably either one or two going with the heart as far as who's more important within your body, right? So your body is going to do anything it can to protect this area. It's going to do whatever it takes, right? One of the things it's going to do is it's going to tighten the neck up. Right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to give that foundation. So a nice little analogy is your head's the tree, your neck is the roots, your shoulder blade area is the soil. Okay? So if your shoulder blade or your soil is loose, like a lot of the sand here in Florida, right? our, our sandy soil, you know, it's pretty loose, those roots really have to dig in deep to, to hold up whatever, whatever tree it is or whatever bush it is. They're really going to have to hold down tight. So what they do is they get tight right? Because they don't really have a good foundation to grab into. You know, the shoulder blade region is not really strong enough to give good support for the neck muscles. A lot of our neck muscles attach right into our scapula or our shoulder blade area or right into the spine right there where the scapula is, right? And so if that area is not a good foundation, then the neck is going to have to try to make up for that and compensate for that. So these stretches, the first one is basically, so with both of them, you take one arm and you put it behind your back. And then you just take the other arm right over the top and you just pull down. With the first one, you're just looking forward. Nothing special. You're just looking forward, bringing that ear to your shoulder, right? Now, I say hold it for 10 seconds just because that's part of my one minute philosophy here. But if it feels good, hold it for 30. Hold it for a minute, right? I wouldn't hold it for more than a minute, but up to a minute is, is perfectly fine, perfectly safe, all right? So that's the first one. The second one I call smell the pit. So same arm, same side, but this time you're turning your head, you're checking to see if you got some deodorant on, right? And you're just pulling down. Same thing. This time you should feel the stretch a little bit more into the back of the head. So less on the side <clears throat> and more in the back of the neck. Same thing. Hold it for 10 seconds if you're doing the one minute. If it feels really good, hold it for 30 or hold it up, for, up to a minute, okay? You would do that on both sides left and right, regardless of what side your headache's on, because we got to get the roots good, right? So there's 40 seconds of the one minute exercise, gone, just on stretching. That's how important that is, that we get those muscles loose, right? Next one, shoulder rolls. The idea behind the shoulder roll is you're promoting your body into that good posture, right? So always roll backwards, never forwards, because forwards is the problem, right? We always roll backwards. And the idea is you do about 10 of those. And what we want to really you know, focus on is the back and down, right? Really trying to put your shoulder blades in your back pocket. So if you could imagine your shoulder blades being that big, you're trying to get them all the way down into that back pocket. Doing about 10 of these and doing that, you know, 10 would be part of the one minute, right? If you do these, what you're going to do is you're going to wake those muscles up. So those are your shoulder blade muscles. Those are, those, those are your, your soil, right? You're going to wake that soil up. And the muscles sometimes need to be woken up. They get very lazy at times, right? And so when the muscles get lazy, the tight muscles win every time. Where are our tight muscles right now? In our neck, where we don't want them. So those muscles are going to win every time. So what we have to do is we have to try to wake these muscles up. Shoulder rolls, great way to wake them up. Great way to remind you of your good posture. And a great way to really, you're even doing a little bit of strengthening as well with the shoulder rolls. The last one, so this would be the 50 to 60 seconds, uh, as far as the one minute exercise, is little squeezes, okay? Now basically all you're doing is you're just pinching your shoulder blades back and you should feel the pinch right in the middle. And if you over squeeze, you'll get a cramp, right? So don't over squeeze, 
okay? But the idea is you're just, once again, waking these muscles up, getting those shoulders back. These are the muscles that are important for keeping the shoulders in that back position, okay? Um, if you do these one minute exercises, I say to try to do them every 30 minutes, right? Or every 15 minutes. And what you're doing is you're not only are you keeping these muscles awake and constantly getting a good stretch in, which is gonna give you a physical response, you're also mentally thinking about posture now, all right? So it's 122, you're like, oh, at 130 I gotta do my exercises, right? Oh, that's for posture. Oh, I'm in terrible posture right now. Boom, I'm in better posture now. So now you got maybe an extra eight minutes in good posture, back to the endurance, right? You're building up your endurance. So the more that you kind of think about your one minute exercise, the more often you're gonna get that, that feedback for sitting in good posture. These next two are good to do at home, um, a little bit harder to do um, as far as, you know, just kind of doing them while you're driving or doing them, you know, in the office or something like that. But the deep neck flexors. So we talked about the upper cross syndrome earlier, tight muscles, weak muscles. Um, one of the muscles that gets really, or group of muscles that gets really weak is the, the muscles in the front of the neck or your neck flexors. Um, this is kind of a tricky exercise as far as if you're just kind of trying to learn it on your own because you can do it wrong very easily. Um, if it hurts, you're doing it wrong, essentially. But all you're really doing, and it's easier to do laying down than it is sitting up, but what you're basically doing is you are tucking the chin and then lifting the head if you're in a laying down position. In a sitting up position, basically all we're focusing on is tucking the chin, tucking the chin, right? So that's what those muscles do, they tuck the chin, okay? When you're laying down, which is a better way to do it, you tuck the chin and then you just lift your head just off the pillow like a centimeter, right? I'm talking just off the pillow. Anything higher than that, you just kicked in your upper traps, which is one of our problem muscles that we don't wanna get involved, okay? So it's very little pressure, very little motion with this one. But this is a really important one. It can be a very beneficial one as well. The next one, doorway stretches. Um, I had a professor tell me that if everybody did doorway stretches, the world would be a better place. And so, you know, doorway stretches, um, are great to do because they're easy and you can do them throughout your day once again just like the one minute exercise so every time you go to leave the office or every time you go walk into a different room every time you go to the bathroom something like that um, you know you can do these little stretches the idea here is we're stretching out those pec muscles so we talked about the muscles that bring those shoulders forward all right these stretches are going to help to stretch those muscles out which allows the muscles in the back to operate better which allows you to be in better posture um, the three different kind of ways that we do this one is what we call a T a W and a Y and all that basically is, is the position you're making with your arms. So the T, you're just holding arms out to the side. W, you're just bending. And a Y, you know, the YMCA. Everybody knows how to do the YMCA, right? If doing it with both sides is too much, or maybe you have wide doorways, you know, like for instance here, we have wheelchair accessible doors. So doing it, unless you're six foot five or six foot six, gonna be very hard. You can do it one side at a time, okay? So you can do the one side at a time. You can do the T, you can do the W, you can do the Y. And you should always feel the stretch in the front of the shoulder. If you feel it in the back of the shoulder, you probably went way too far, and now you're stressing the joint too much. You've kind of gone past the stretch, so to speak. Um, advanced exercises. So this is just more stuff that we would address like in a PT situation, <clears throat> or somebody who's been addressing their posture and feels like they've really gotten a good foundation on it. Um, one of the areas, obviously, is the scapula, is one of the areas that we'd want to continue to work on. A lot of specialized exercises you can do to really focus on that area. Um, the other air thing that you want to focus on is actually the rotator cuff, okay, and shoulder stability. Uh, when our shoulders are not strong, we tend to overcompensate by using the neck and the mid-back. Because if the shoulder is not stable, then these muscles are going to look for another area for stability. Okay, so now they're going to look into the mid-back area, which our soil we have established is loose and not stable either. So now you've got no stability. So now your rotator cuff ends up actually getting kind of weak because it doesn't, it doesn't allow you to perform how it's supposed to perform. So addressing the rotator cuff becomes a big thing. Um, and then once again, you know, posture, once you've addressed it, it becomes easier. So endurance exercise. The more you do posture, the better it's gonna be. Last little thing I'm gonna touch on here, um, the holistic approach, or basically kind of those outside things. Um, <clears throat> these are approaches that aid in sort of addressing posture or aid in doing a lot of those type of things. Um, and sometimes, you know, this is all it would take for somebody to really get good benefit from their headache or from their migraine. But typically, not so much the case. These are going to be things you would try, you know, besides exercise. Everybody should exercise, always. 
But besides that, you know, these are going to be the things that um, can kind of aid in your management. Um, the first one is mental imagery. Um, so this kind of goes along the, the line with the biofeedback as well. Um, as far as are you firing the right muscles? Are you really getting what you want out of whatever exercise or whatever posture you're trying to do? So, you know, when you're thinking about your good posture, you know, close your eyes and imagine, okay, I'm sitting with my shoulders back. So um, picture the muscles in the front stretching and pictures the muscles in the back pulling and getting tight to try to hold your shoulders back. You know, give yourself those visual feedbacks. And, and you know, it, studies have shown that when you think about an activity, you do it better. Right? Your muscles fire better. They'd use this a lot in professional sports. You know, they'll sit there just with their eyes closed and think about hitting a baseball. Think about catching a football for a touchdown. And what happens is your brain establishes that as being real and as being what's happening. And it already starts to trigger that muscle memory process. Okay? So the, the mental imagery is really good in that aspect. And it's really good with breathing techniques. You know? So you know, smell the roses, blow out the candles. You know, that's the, the most common one. But really focusing in on deep breathing, relaxation, and things like that. These are great to do when you're having the headache or when you feel like a headache's coming on um, as far as helping with that. Um, supplements and diet, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, way too much to even, uh, you can do a whole presentation on diet, supplement type of things. But most common things are going to be the gluten, you know, milk, dairy products, cheese, things like that, and caffeine intakes. So everybody's had their, you know, coffee withdrawals and things like that. You get a headache from it, right? Your body becomes dependent on that caffeine. So you can't let your body become dependent on the caffeine. Um, alcohol um, obviously affects it. Smoking affects it greatly. Um, but one of the supplements that um, I've kind of noticed, uh, I've asked a few patients, like, I, I tend to ask the patients, you know, are they doing any kind of, cr not crazy, but different things for their headaches or different, and butter burr seems to be the most common supplement that a lot of people are taking. Um, you can get it at like GNC and things like that, that they, is what they always tell me. So I don't think it's anything too out there as far as hard to find. Um, so I did a lot of research on it and you know a lot of it sh shows good results with migraines and good results with headaches. Um, the only caveat, the only thing to be aware of it said was some um, of the butter burr products have what they call, you know, PAs in them. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that first word, um, but basically alkaloids uh, in them. And the only problem with um, these PAs is they can cause uh, liver uh, problems, you know, if you take you know, a load of it, a ton of it. Um, but they do have butter burr supplements that don't have these PAs in them. Um, so that's a supplement that, you know, I've, I haven't really been promoting it to my patients, but I've just noticed a lot of patients telling me about it. Um, obviously exercise, really important. You're increasing your endorphins, um, you're, you're promoting blood flow, you're decreasing muscle tension, you're getting flexibility back. Exercise, you know, cures all, right? Exercise is, is where it's at. Um, another thing is acupuncture. Uh, acupuncture helps, you know, with relaxation. It also helps decrease the, the high reactivity within the neural, you know, the nerves and things like that. And that helps a lot um, with um, headaches. Another thing um, that I didn't really talk about, and Jesse seen you remind me of it, is TENS units and electrical stimulation and things like that. We use that a lot with our patients with headaches. Um, and the whole idea behind the TENS units is that they help to decrease the muscle tension um, that's in the area. They promote relaxation. Uh, TENS units are used all over the body for all types of things. Uh, most commonly you hear people, oh yeah, when I hurt my back or hurt my shoulder, you know, they put that zappy thing on me. Um, you know, the idea behind the TENS unit is it decreases pain, right, and it gives you a, a better sensation, which allows you to relax. You know, that relaxation allows the muscles to relax, allows you to get more blood flow back into the area and things like that. Um, there's all kinds of cool garments and things like that you can get with the TENS units where you can actually wrap them around your head so you can actually get the pressure that I was talking about with the ice with the TENS unit all at the same time. So points of goodness, right? The more good things you do, the better. Um, so those are um, really, really great things uh, for migraines or for headaches and things like that. And those are usually not um, too hard to get a hold of. And that's it. So any questions, guys? Fire away. Um, you talked about um, you know, the, the three different types of the tension, the, the migraine. Um, can you say a little bit more about um, the secondary, let's say um, you might have uh, one of your cervical vertebrae that's causing some problems that 
you know it's distinctly coming from a certain area. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you say more about that? Yeah. yeah, so the secondary, so that's when, you know, really, that's when, kind of right, right here, determining, you know, what type of headache you're having or where your headache's coming from can become so important. Right, so that's where, I, where like us as a physical therapist becomes really important because the, we, would, we would find that, right? We would hope we would find that. We would find a decreased motion in your vertebrae. You know, maybe you have a fusion or maybe you've had a disc problem in the past or maybe you have bone spurs, things like that. And so what we would do is we address that separately, almost completely from the headache. But by addressing that, you're also gonna address the headache. So the headache being the symptom coming from the neck problem. So let's say you had a bone spur or something like that in the neck or uh, you know past fractures, anything like that. So now that vertebrae doesn't move as much, right? So your body's gonna compensate for that, okay? So that vertebrae is meant to turn a certain amount of motion to the right, to the left, forward, back, but it doesn't do it anymore. What's your body gonna do? The level above, the level below are gonna move more now, right? Because your body's gonna get that motion. And so now what happens is now you're putting an area which is maybe only supposed to get 60 degrees of rotation now is maybe getting 80 degrees of rotation so you're putting more stress on whatever muscles attach at that vertebrae whatever ligaments attach at that vertebrae and so as you put more pressure into that area then the cascade effect begins right so now other muscles are gonna have to try to compensate to help that muscle out and so now they're not doing their main job Okay, and as muscles over time, you know, our muscles are very good at compensating and trying to help each other out. But over time, just like anybody, if you were helping a coworker out for, for a day or for a week or something, it's fine. But for a year, you know, you're, you're fed up with it. You've had enough. It flares up, boom, you get the tension. And once, once you kind of get to that point, you know, it's kind of what we get to what we call like a tissue failure. Basically, the, the tissues in that area now have kind of just, they collapse and they don't do their jobs anymore. It's kind of haphazard. So with physical therapy, that's one of the big things we address. Getting everything back to normal, right? So if you can get that motion back to normal, then things are gonna be addressed better. But let's say you had a fusion or something like that, right? So you're never gonna really get that rotation back. That vertebrae is never gonna rotate that way. What we have to do is we have to develop, that's when we start talking about posture and body mechanics even more. Right, so you knowing that you're not gonna be able to turn your head all the way like that, so now you know, okay, I have to turn my body when I go to do something like that. Or if you're driving, right, so instead of doing one of these things, right, you're gonna actually maybe have to get a modification and get a bigger mirror, side mirror. You know, these type of things are things that we would address to address that issue. So it becomes a, a full life type of function type of thing with it. And that's kind of the second, I guess getting back to the secondary thing. So that secondary meaning that it's not, the primary reason you're getting the headache is from a secondary issue. Such, not just the tension from the, you know, while it can lead to a tension headache, the tension in the muscle is usually coming from somewhere else, like that vertebrae. So. And with migraines, um, mm -hmm. I've experienced migraines, I don't anymore, thank goodness, but Good. I used to. But yeah. uh, one of the triggers that I have is, um, odors, like scents, like mm -hmm. certain perfumes mm -hmm. and so on. Do you find that to be the case or yes. any petroleum-based product? <clears throat> yeah, well actually what it is, it's a lot of the cranial nerves, right? So the olfactory nerve is kind of what you're talking about there. A lot of the cranial nerves um, basically become sensitive, right? And it, for different people, it's different nerves. Trigeminal nerve is the most commonly affected nerve of them all, but usually it's other, it's the cranial nerves because they're all in such a general location that they become hypersensitive. So things that normally wouldn't affect most people now affect you. Now that becomes your trigger, right? And so then that's what kind of causes your cascade and things like that. So yeah, no, um, smells, lighting, obviously you get that a lot um, with the migraines, um, the diet activities and things like that, um, such as watching movies that are too fast or anything like that, um, colors, bright colors, you know, anything that involves input um, can affect migraines.